Hey guys, Dr. Berg here. In this video, I want to discuss probably one of the most important body systems that you have. It's the digestive system. Okay, so you have 33 feet of intestines, and that's a, like you can imagine a water hose in your backyard. It's a very long hose, and it's all wrapped around, and there's a lot of things that happen from start to finish. So let's just time to take it from the top. You got the stomach here, which um, normally what's interesting about the stomach is that people don't realize how acid the stomach should be. If you understand pH, neutral is seven, and it goes down to be more acid and higher to be more alkaline. Um, for every number, let's say we go from seven to six going down, that's 10 times more acid. So it, it compounds. So you can imagine a pH of one to three, that is super, super acidic, okay? That's what the stomach should be normally. And the stomach actually helps you release, uh, the stomach releases the acid triggers enzymes that then help you break down protein. So they have very powerful uh, protolytic enzymes. So if there's a problem with the valve on the top of the stomach, then that enzyme gets up into the esophagus. It can literally digest your tissues up into your throat. Um, so it's that powerful. It helps you absorb minerals. Um, so if you don't have the right uh, acid in your stomach, you can't absorb like iron. You become anemic. Um, like even B12 will not be absorbing either, and that's another type of anemia. It also kills microbes, because microbes have a hard time living in that acid. And even, even uh, H. pylori, which is a very nasty bacteria that causes ulcers and other issues, um, if your stomach is very acidic, that thing will stay in remission or not invade your, your tissues. Uh, but if the stomach is not acid enough, it will not release these two other organs called the pancreas, and the gallbladder. So what controls the pancreas and, and the uh, gallbladder is really the pH of the stomach. The pH of the stomach also controls the valve at the top of the stomach. So without that stomach being acidic, you, you can get GERD, acid reflux, and then people take antiacids, which is the exact opposite. But what happens if you, you can't release the pancreas, now we don't, we don't get the release of enzymes. So the pancreas has all these different enzymes for carbohydrates, proteins, fats, collagen, you name it and it's constantly released depending on what you eat. So signals from your mouth are telling the pancreas what to release and what to create uh, when you start eating. So, so we have this enzyme breakdown and then we have the gallbladder release bile. Bile helps you break down fats, uh, break down fats so you can absorb fat soluble vitamins, vitamin A, D, E, and K. Uh, and then also um, help you, it helps you detoxify certain uh, chemicals in the liver. So without the gallbladder, we can't get that full detox. But these two work together. And then the bile is alkaline, so it helps to neutralize this incredibly strong acid coming into the small intestine. So if we didn't have the bile, we couldn't neutralize that, and you would get an ulcer in your small intestine. And then we have the pancreas that also makes this other alkaline fluid called bicarbonate that helps neutralize the acid at this point too. So we go from a strong acid to a very alkaline um, uh, fluid inside the small intestine. So the small intestine is alkaline, okay? And it's so funny when people say, well, you need to be alkaline. Um, well, what part of the body are you talking about? Because your stomach better not be alkaline. Definitely the small intestine should be alkaline, but the large intestine should be uh, acidic. So you have different pHs. So now in the small intestine, this is where 90% of the digestion occurs. And you have help though, you have microbes. You have a lot of microbes. In fact, in your body, you have a, a thousand trillion bacteria or microbes in your body outside and inside. That's a thousand trillion, that's a lot. You only have a, a hundred trillion cells. So these bacteria or these microbes um, have, are 10 times more than your own cells. So, if you take a body, it's mostly um, microbes. Um, so, but they're very small. So you don't, there's like probably about three or four, maybe five pounds of microbes per body weight. But the microbes basically help you break down your food and help so you can absorb the food. Um, there's thousands, tens of thousands of different strains of microbes in your gut. You have good bacteria, and then you have bad bacteria. They're called pathogenic. Now, antibiotics destroy both good and bad bacteria. What's happening now is the bad bacteria is adapting to the uh, antibiotics and they're becoming more resistant. 
So now the antibiotics don't work. But the good news is this, that the good bacteria also adapts to the antibiotics. If it didn't, you'd be, probably be dead by now. So your microbes are very intelligent and they have developed new strategies of, of surviving. So if you take a, let's say someone comes in your house and they try to steal something and then you take a bat and you whack them, right? Well, the next time they come in their house, they wear a helmet. So these microbes basically have different ways of adapting to survive. Um, one of the interesting strategies some of these microbes pulled off is they basically can mimic um, and adapt uh, to your vitamin D receptors. They mimic the vitamin D receptor. So when your vitamin D goes into the wrong receptor, it doesn't work anymore. So it's just it's fascinating because you need vitamin D for the immune system. So there's all these different types of strategies they use. Uh, one type of micro adapted without a cell wall so they can move into the joints and then they can travel and they can do this and they can hide so your immune system can't detect them. Very intelligent, sneaky little guys, but thank goodness that our good bacteria also adapt. Um, so we have 90% uh, of the nutri nutrition absorption occurs at this level. Um, what's other, another thing that's interesting about this is that you have something called the enteric nervous system. So you have the sympathetic, which is the flight or fight, that's like the stress uh, nervous system, and then we have the parasympathetic, which is part of the rest and digest, which controls a lot of this too. That's, that's kind of like the opposite of the stress nervous system. But then you have the enteric, which controls um, like all this intestines and the peristalsis, the pumping action of the whole thing. And if you're, someone cut your spinal column, for example, you could, this will still work because it's an independent nervous system. It can work on its own. That's why they call it the second brain. But the challenge is that a lot of the information that happens down here is transmitted up to the brain. So whatever's going on in your digestion can affect your mood. You could, it could create depression, anxiety, and a lot of tension in your neck and even a lot of headaches. So um, it's interesting how the digestion can affect your mood and also your mood could affect your digestion both ways because it's a second brain. Um, the bacteria also makes uh, a lot of B vitamins. So what happens when I see people with vitamin B deficiencies, it's not because they're not consuming them, it's because they don't have the microbes or they, they don't have the good digestive system to absorb those vitamin B uh, or those uh, B vitamins. Or they, they make them but they can't get absorbed because the surface lining of the intestines is damaged. So I'll, I'll get to that in a little bit, but what these microbes eat or consume is uh, fiber, uh, preferably when we want to feed them vegetable fiber. And they turn it into something called butyrate, which is a, a type of acid that then will feed the colon cells. So it's, it's interesting, these microbes actually exchange with us. Uh, we help them, they, we provide a house, and they give us food as well. So that's what happens in the small intestine. And the large intestine is mainly uh, responsible for reabsorption of water and minerals, but this is where you have the highest concentration of microbes. So without the microbes here, you'll get diarrhea, okay? Um, the little, uh, little roots that occur in the small intestine are called little villi. They're upside down roots and that's where it absorbs and you have like a million bacteria per millimeter, like a real small surface area. There's a, so many compacted microbes in there that are supposed to help you absorb. And right when it gets absorbed, it goes right into the lymphatic system. 80% of your lymphatic system is surrounding your intestines. So 85% of your immune system is really connected to your gut. And it's there as kind of like an immigration to give these microbes a stamp of approval or not approval to not let them through. So there's a barrier there that resists microbes that are unfriendly. So when you destroy these little um, so-called villi or little roots, you get this small surface area where you, now you can't, um, you lose your Im immigration. So now my unfriendly microbes can innervate and start to go into the lymphatic system and create hell for your immune system. That's where you get autoimmune diseases. That's where the immune system uh, you know, starts giving the wrong information and attacking, its own, creating antibodies for your own tissue. It's like self-attack. So you have a lot of inflammatory conditions that originate from this lining that you lose the structure 
okay? So uh, there's a couple things that you can do. Um, number one, you have to build up the flora. And I think the best way is to take something called effective microbes. I'll put a link down there. I'm not a, affiliated, I don't get any commissions or anything, but I'll put a link down there of effective microbes and you can check it out. But effective microbes um, is a symbiotic a group of microbes that um, basically all live on each other. So they kind of work together. And you want to take a very, very, very small amount starting out because if you have too many uh, unfriendly strains, you can create a war. So you want to take them right before you go to bed um, and then they'll grow in your system over a period of time. So effective microbes are very important. And then to retrain your immune system, uh, your T cells, and start to put back that immune system, I recommend something called colostrum. And uh, again, I'll put a link down there below. I'm not affiliated with any companies. But this is a really good thing to um, improve your immune system. And it's really, really good for rheumatoid arthritis. It's good for inflammation. It's good for autoimmune. It's good for allergies. It's really good for sinus mucus. It's good for any type of inflammatory condition. But I will say, when you take this, start off taking very small amounts, maybe one-fourth of a teaspoon before bed. Why? Because if you don't have a good immune system, you're going to stir up a hornet's nest and you're going to get more mucus that it's going to kick in there. So you always want to start off very small over a gradual period of time to start introducing these two things. So and I also recommend L-glutamine too. Those three are really good to start building up the intestinal wall. And then over time, um, you'll start getting your immune system back. Okay. So uh, I hope that kind of gave you a summary of how this digestive system works and uh, put your comments below.